Hello and welcome to the OptimaJet channel. This video is about the form builder component for creating and managing interactive forms for your web projects. It includes a user interface, and the process of building and testing forms is as simple as dragging and dropping form elements. The builder is based on React and works well with other systems that use React. It can also be integrated into any web app. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to deploy it and how to create a simple form that'll help you get started. Get the Form Builder installer from the formbuilder.dev website forward slash download. The link is in the description. You can find it in the video description as well. The installation package includes a README file with step by step instructions and a couple of commands we'll need to run to install Form Builder on a Windows, Linux, or Mac OS computer. For this demo, we'll be using a Mac system which is very similar to Linux in terms of how terminal works. On a Windows machine, the terminal is called Command Line. Before we proceed, make sure that you have Node.js and NPM installed, and if you don't, you can find links to download them in the description. Form Builder uses Webpack 4. Next, go to the Form Builder directory, which we've downloaded right here, in the terminal. Then change the directory to Demo. Then run the npm install command. Wait a few seconds. And now we can start the system on our local host. Enter the command npm start. This will launch the Form Builder demo app. After launching the application, you will see the following text. Project is running at http colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 8080. Copy this address to your web browser and go. Now Form Builder is up and running. Let's look at the Form Builder user interface and see how the editor works. After selecting the Form Builder option, we'll see the application form demo example. First, let's cover the editing features. The items on the right are divided into four groups. The first one is containers. These are blocks of elements that represent a separate form, menu, HTML div, or custom blocks. Collections are spreadsheet elements, grids, and tables. Controls contain the main building blocks of forms, and here you can see a list of standard interface elements, input fields, drop-down lists, radio buttons, etc. And charts let you add different types of charts to the form. To add an element to the form, drag and drop the element from the right panel to a drop zone in the middle. A tool panel will appear above it with a set of buttons that let you change its position by dragging it to another drop zone, edit the settings, duplicate, or delete the element. Let's run through the input control settings. On the General tab, we can see the following parameters. The input field name will be used for binding it to a data model and adding it as a code identifier on the client side. The field type. This can be text, number, password, etc. A label, which will be shown in the interface. Label position. Placeholder text to show the user an example of a valid entry. Various options. Size for quick adjustments. Note that we're looking at the input field element settings, but other elements have their own settings depending on their function. Still, the names of the settings are self explanatory, so you won't get lost. On the Style tab, you can fine tune the look of this form element and its position, size, etc. Also, you can add a custom CSS class to the element or hide it. The Event tab shows control events. Here you can set a chain of actions that'll be executed one by one based on the handling of a specific event. The list of actions in this dropdown is defined in the properties of the DWKit form builder component. 
Please note that the current list is just for demonstration purposes. Actions should be handled by your own system, whereas Form Builder simply calls the external functions. In the Others tab, you have options for visibility, validation, mandatory field switch, etc. Click Save to keep the changes. You can create templates based on forms. After you design a form, it can be saved as a template. Later, you can use a template to create a new form or add it to another form. Here, we've created a standard contact form so you can add it as boilerplate. You can also create your own template with a set of buttons that execute specific actions in your project. Save your template by clicking Download on the top bar. This will download a JSON file that you can use later by mentioning it in the code in the part where you initialize Form Builder. Now let's add a few elements to this form. First, let's add an input field. Set its name to application title without spaces because it'll be used in the code as an element identifier. Type application title in the title field. This will be shown in the interface. Then add a drop down list from the right panel to the placeholder right below the title. After that, set up the events that you want these fields to generate based on user actions and send them for further processing. After you're done working with the form, you can click Download at the top. Also, you can upload the form you've been working on before using the Upload button. Now let's go to the debugging mode by clicking Open in Viewer at the top. On the left hand side, we can see how the form looks, while the right side shows JSON data, errors, and the form model used by the form. The preview window part is linked with the test pane and updates in real time. If you change something on one side, it'll be reflected on the other. Let's add something in the input field. This change will be immediately visible in the data. Likewise, if we change something in the data on the right panel, the form will display the changes. The Errors section will show any error messages that this form may contain. If we add an error here, on the right hand side, we can see how this field turns red in the preview. The Models section is a description of all the elements and their settings, which you can see in the form. In other words, it's JSON, which you can download from the form builder. All momentary changes made on either side will be displayed on the other one as well. If you scroll down, you'll see a console you can use for debugging purposes. It displays form-generated events that are triggered by external systems that are linked to this form. This is very convenient for testing purposes, and it'll save you a significant amount of time when developing a complex form with multiple field types and events. For example, when we click the Save button, an on-click event is generated, and the save action is sent to an external system for handling. You can set parameters for your event handler as well, but in our example, we don't have any. To embed your form on a website, follow the documentation from the link shown on the screen. To put it briefly, you need to include a React component into your project. Now let's run through the essential components properties. Data represents the information that's reflected in the form. The model object describes the form elements and their properties. The errors object specifies form errors. Data change is an event that's generated when form values have been changed. Event func. Here you can set an event handler that handles form events from form elements. For example, button.onclick, input.onchange, etc. Get additional data for control is used for pagination. This function will be used by grid view, dictionary, and a few other form elements, so when a user scrolls, new data will be displayed in these elements. Hide controls contains the list of form elements that should be hidden. Read-only controls stores elements that can be viewed but not edited. Read-only is a global property for an entire form. If it's set to true, all form fields will be protected from editing. 
Download URL and Upload URL are your service addresses used to download and upload files. Form Builder is a component which can be used as a standalone product to make the form creation process quicker than ever. It works perfectly with React web apps because it's compliant with React guidelines and everything is based on states. Every button click generates a standardized event, so any React-based system will accept it and respond accordingly. It can work with non-React-based systems as well. Thank you for watching this video. Give it a like and subscribe to our channel to see fresh updates and new tutorials on OptimaJet products.